Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we're gonna talk about something really interesting, about Nick Walker and what is his best version of all time, or should I say from past couple of years, because I've heard a couple of contradicting opinions, a lot of people have different opinions on this, my take originally was that this 2024 New York Pro version of Nick Walker is his absolute best, but when I heard the other arguments, I can see why it might not be, I'm not saying that it isn't, so we're gonna do a comparison, we're gonna try to compare this to his two other very good versions, Arnold Classic 2023 and Mr. Olympia 2022, and try to decide which one is the best? Now, the only argument that you can make about this version to say that it isn't the best one is because of the midsection and maybe, maybe because of the conditioning. He probably was slightly more conditioned in some other shows. If we go all the way back to 2021 and Nick's rookie year, he did bring some pretty good conditioning and overall great packages to a couple of shows, I would say Arnold Classic 2021 was his best of that year, he looked phenomenal, at least in his strong poses, like front double and most muscular, some other shots as well, I would say his midsection was also smaller back then, but there are other poses in which he wasn't as good as he is today, especially back poses, he definitely wasn't out of the oven yet, he definitely made a lot more progress in the upcoming years, so I don't think 2021 is his best, I think he definitely looked better in 2022, 2023, or even 2024. We're gonna compare these versions side by side, but first let's take a look at these separately, and let's look at them closely. So, 2022 Mr. Olympia was, at that point, his biggest ever. He was also really, really full, really freaking massive. No wonder he placed third at the Mr. Olympia that year. And also, considering the size he gained that year, his midsection actually stayed very nice and tight. The previous off-season, prior to prepping for this show, he worked with Dom Super Sliced, who helped him a lot with digestion, with choosing the right food, they were really paying attention to his waist size, and apparently, as Dom says, he lost 2.5 inches from his waist, and it definitely showed on that stage. Also, in that off-season, it really looked like he was pushing for size, and even though he pushed for size and gained all this mass, he didn't lose the waist size, so 2022 was a very, very good variation of Nick Walker, However, his conditioning was probably not the best ever, you know, he was probably more conditioned in 2021 or in 2023, at the Arnold Classic especially, let's take a look at that one now. So I would say here his midsection was potentially even better, because he was lighter, and he was more conditioned than ever before in his life. His conditioning here was really good, he was really dry, but he kinda lost on the shape. You know, he kind of lost on that X frame because he sucked down a little bit too much. A little bit too much. He kind of overdyed a little, just like Quinton Rye this year, for example, but not to that point, of course. He was still very, very good. He just wasn't good enough to win. Yeah, he placed second, which is also really good, but he didn't defend his title. He won it the year prior. So it wasn't a good thing for Nick, also from behind you could see the lack of fullness, especially in the lower body, so even though he was the driest, the leanest, the most conditioned, the most detailed ever, it still, I would say, wasn't exactly my favorite look, because when he lost all that fullness from dieting so hard, he just lost that pop, even from behind, you can see it kind of in the glutes, in the hamstrings, in the back, but more so from the front, because he kind of looked flatter, you know, and his legs are short, they're stubby, so if he loses the fullness, he loses the sweep, he loses the axe taper, the, the axe frame, so, you know, it was, in my opinion, Nick's best ever. And now we come to this year's version, and in my opinion, this conditioning was better than 2022 Mr. Olympia, it probably wasn't as good as the Arnold Classic 2023, however, he improved significantly from those two years, he was definitely a lot bigger, especially in the back, but really, everywhere else, he was just bigger, fuller, rounder, however, with that, as you guys know, his midsection got a little bit out of control, from behind it wasn't an issue, from behind he looked phenomenal, from the sides and from the front, mm, it wasn't exactly, it was, it was definitely showing. He tried to control it, he did a great job with that, but it wasn't perfect. Can he improve that for the Mr. Olympia, you know, practice posing a little bit more, or maybe somehow make it smaller, I don't know, probably he can do a better job at the Mr. Olympia, but that's not the topic of this video. Now, before we start the actual comparison, we gotta address this real quick. 
if Nick Walker beat Martin Fitzwater by only one point, where does that put Nick Walker, the Mr. Olympia? You know, is he top 10 now or top 6? Or can he still be in that top 3 like he was in 2022? Let's be real, guys. Martin Fitzwater is a top 10 Olympian, potentially. Best case scenario, he might crack the top 6, we'll see. But he's not a top 3 guy. So if he's almost beating Nick this year, what does that mean? In my opinion, what that means is condition here was comparable. Sure, Martin was a little bit more conditioned, maybe. But muscularity-wise, Nick blew him away. Nick was definitely much bigger, much fuller, much more detailed, much harder, much denser. So muscularity-wise, Nick is on another level. And the reason why so many judges thought he should be second, in my opinion, was simply his midsection control. They decided to punish him for it. And yes, it cannot be overlooked. It's a big thing. It's worse than being slightly off with conditioning. But I really believe he's going to work on this much, much harder and learn how to control that midsection better now. I guess he was a little bit lazy for this New York Pro because he knew these guys are not on that level. He doesn't need to be 100% in terms of conditioning and posing. So he will probably be much, much better than Mr. Olympia. Alright, now let's get to it. In my opinion, his two best versions of all time, 2022 Mr. Olympia and 2024 New York Pro. So like I said, his midsection wasn't as tight this year as it was before. And the reason why the judges punished him for it is not simply because of a principle, of a rule. They punished him because this one thing can really ruin your lines in certain poses. For example, front double bicep. I would say his details in the quads this year were definitely better than in 2022. But back then, his waist was smaller, and because of that, his legs seemed bigger. Which also kinda makes his lats look bigger, and his shoulders overall wider. And as you can see, he kinda changed the style of hitting this pose. Previously, he was crunching his abs a little bit more. I prefer his previous version of hitting the front double bicep. Also, what he's doing with his arms, you know, pushing the elbows forward, I also like that more than what he's doing now. Also, I don't know if he developed a diastasis, the separation of the ab muscles in the middle, or were his abs always like that, but he's hitting the poses differently and they look more separated now? I think it's the former. We're gonna check it out in the other poses as well, but overall, even though I do see more details, probably better conditioning, more hardness now, I just still prefer the 2022 look of the front double bicep. That's only one pose. Let's move on to the next one. I think you can see in the transitions as well how much more conditioned he is now than he was at that year's Mr. Olympia. And this just goes to show how important conditioning actually is in open bodybuilding. Like I talked about this before, Samson Dauda did really well in all of his shows because he was always big and full and round and that matters a lot in bodybuilding. Conditioning, it's important to have it to a certain point, but if you get too dry, it's unnecessary and it might hurt your look. So, in 2022, he wasn't super conditioned, he was conditioned enough, and it looked really good, and he placed third, and now the New York Pro, as you can see, he is definitely much more conditioned, but he's also full, because he's big, he's bigger now, he gained more muscle, and he could afford to get disconditioned and not lose the size. So, I would say, overall, like, conditioning and fullness and completeness of this pose goes to the 2024 variation, however, the midsection... The midsection is showing in the side chest now. It was much, much tighter in 2022. It is a side pose and he can hide his midsection with his arms to a point, but if you can still see it, you know, going that far, popping that much out, you know, it's destroying his lines. And I can see why the judges decided to punish him, some of them at least, but, you know, muscularity, conditioning, completeness and all that stuff, 2024 is better. Take a look at this now. In 2022, he was proud of his midsection. He showed it to us and to the judges. Look at this. He wasn't doing this this year. Now, as far as the back itself, I would say the back progressed a lot. You can see the differences, especially in the back lat spread. But as far as the back double bicep, it is definitely much closer. I would say his glutes and his hamstrings are more conditioned now. But as far as the back itself... Yeah, still, like, the waist-to-shoulder ratio, how much his lats are popping, the way his wee taper looks now is better, but he was also, he had a lot of depth back in 2022, so this one is comparable, I would say, because of conditioning mainly, I'd give it to 2024 again. 
he definitely looks more streamlined now. In 2022, he was kind of blocky, a little bit more blocky than now. For some reason, I think it's only because he grew his lats more. They're popping out more. And you can especially see it in the back lat spread. It's a huge, huge difference. I'm sure it has a little bit to do with the posing as well. Maybe a lot. But I would also say he improved the back. Because these two look like two different bodybuilders. He's hitting it completely differently now and you know with this added to his poses he's gonna be very dangerous at a mr olympia if he controls that midsection better if it's not completely out of control the same thing as with the back double bicep the lower body more conditioned and the upper body the back it's not even close it's not even close he is far better now and again looking like this he's gonna look really good standing next to the other guys at the mr olympia you know the top three guys now as far as most muscular one of his best poses i have to go with the 2022 because of that transition check it out once again as he turns around he's keeping it tight keeping it tight trying really hard and then when he tries to flex all the muscle it just happens, you know, his midsection gets a little bit out of control and that gap in the middle is showing again. It wasn't showing two years ago, so I guess the diastasis happened as his midsection grew. It happens to pregnant women and to bodybuilders when they grow too much. So I guess that is a problem now. Not really that big of a problem. A lot of guys have it. For example, Keon Pearson has it pretty bad and he is looking very aesthetic, but he can pull a vacuum and so on. He can hide it. Nick was kind of known for his uh, big, huge blocks of abs, and now they're not looking that aesthetic. Obviously, the lighting here is different, and, and probably he looks a little bit fuller because of that than he actually was, because I think in 2024 he was really full as well, just more conditioned. But because of that midsection, it's really hard to give it to 2024, because, yeah, I mean, he wasn't as conditioned and he wasn't as developed, but... A midsection plays a big, big role, guys. Hopefully, he's going to fix that for the Mr. Olympia and look kind of something like this. What do you think? Is that possible? <laughs> Not really, but it would be amazing. If he looked like this, he would probably win like next 10 Mr. Olympias or so. Anyways, guys, down below in the comment section, you tell me what do you think is the best version of Nick Walker and can he fix this issue and come in with a tight midsection for the Mr. Olympia and... I don't know, win? Please top three? What do you guys think is gonna happen? Whatever you think, just tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.